My name is Catherine and welcome to my channel. Today is a rainy Sunday and I thought what better way than to spend a rainy Sunday than going to my local bookstore and I'm here with my dog. She gets a lot of anxiety so don't mind her. If you can hear right now it is raining which makes everything so much cozier. I don't know about you guys but I love listening to like lo-fi with rain sounds. I especially wanted to film at this particular bookstore because it is a Barnes & Noble. The whole store is 25% off which is amazing and I'm also a Barnes & Noble member so I get an additional 10% and the reason why it is all on sale is a bit sad. Basically my local Barnes & Noble is moving and this Barnes & Noble has been here for so long ever since I could remember and I was reading earlier and they've been here for 29 years which is crazy that's like just a little bit older than me so the reasoning is because this part of the city is really being built up with skyscrapers and I'm assuming they're gonna tear it down and build a skyscraper here. But this Barnes & Noble will move and just kind of be like in a different part of the city. And yeah, so that's why the store is 25% off, but I wanted to go in, see what books they are, and film for you guys what I get if I get any books. So let's go in. Okay everyone, I'm back from the bookstore and it's raining a lot harder now, which I had no idea because I was in there for what feels like a while and I wanted to do a haul for you guys if I can hold everything up, so give me a minute. I got, what is this, six books. I got Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This book is probably the most read book right now, like on Goodreads and whatnot. Whenever I find a book that I like in a store that I don't know, I'll go on Goodreads and see its ratings and what people say before I get it. Reading off this book for you guys, Nora Stephan's Life is Books. She's read them all, and she's not the type of heroine. Not the plucky one, not the laid-back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat library agent and her beloved sister Libby, which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away. And basically to kind of scan it, they go on this trip, and then Nora bumps into Charlie Lasher, a bookish broading editor from back in the city, it would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times before and it's never been cute. I thought this would be fun to read. They're on a vacation and that's the first book that I got. I want to see if it's worth the hype. I've read one of her other books and I really liked it. So my favorite genre by the way are romance books and thrillers and this is a thriller book. I haven't read a thriller book in a while because I've kind of been switching up my 
typical genres and reading different books lately. I've been reading a lot of historical fiction, which I think it's always great to switch it up. But this book I've been recommended by somebody and as good ratings on Goodreads. And I read the little slip and I was like, okay, this actually sounds really good. I'm going to get it. It is about Chloe Davis. And when she was 12, six teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. By the end of the summer, her own father had confessed to the crimes and was put away for life leaving Chloe and the rest of her family to grapple with the truth of trying to move forward while dealing with this. And then fast forward 20 years, Chloe's a psychologist and she's getting ready for her wedding and she's finally basically has a grasp of happiness because as you can imagine, your dad murdering six teenage girls, lots of trauma and things to deal with there. And when Chloe is getting ready to have her wedding, um, a local teenage girl goes missing and then another and so basically it, it feels like it's all happening again. Chloe sounds like she wants to basically try to figure out who this killer is, but I'm also excited to read this one. Now the next book is pretty niche, but I also love the cover. Like, let's, let's take a moment for this cover. So, this cover, it's called Disposable City, Miami's Future on the Shores of Climate Catastrophe. And I've seen this book before in a different bookstore and was debating on whether to get it or not because it's a whole book talking about climate change, which I'm very passionate about. It's specifically dealing with Miami. My, we live in Seattle. It's raining right now, my family and I. But lately we've been going to Miami quite often and my parents are even wanting to maybe like spend more time in Miami, maybe retire there, or spend like a good chunk of the year there. They really love the city. You know, Miami is definitely a city that no surprise is prone to climate change, just given that its location, being on the water in Florida. It's about a journalist named Mario Alexandra Ar Ariza, and he investigates different situations that have happened in Miami and he just basically talks about what Miami's future is going to look like what it's already looking like because climate change is already definitely affecting us but especially in a vulnerable city such as Miami I look forward to reading this who knows maybe I'll be reading this literally while on the beach in Miami I don't know that could be a vibe not really <laughs> but it's kind of ironic and the next book I got is how to love animals in a human-shaped world I'm a big animal lover, like a lot of us, I'm sure. And when I saw this book, I was also intrigued. Another nonfiction book. It is about a personal journey into our evolving relationships of animals and a thought-provoking look at how these bonds are being challenged and reformed. This book talks about, you know, we love animals and how can we make animals be happier? Because with factory farms, climate change, deforestation, this might be the worst time in history to be an animal. If we took animals' experiences seriously, how could we eat, think, and live differently? So this book basically looks at how we treat animals and how we can share our planet with them more fairly. This author, he goes from different slaughterhouses, for example, to see how animals are being treated there. Obviously, they're going to be killed, but there's a way to raise them humanely. And this might be a book that talks about just people should be vegetarian slash vegan. I don't know. The author goes from different places like slaughterhouses and zoos and different wild spaces and seas and he just looks at how people are interacting with animals, how ethical is it, how can we be better about it, both domestic animals and wild animals. And so I thought this would be another great nonfiction book to read that would be of interest to me and I loved the little heart-shaped paw. I really liked this and it also has good ratings on Goodreads. Two more books left. The second to last one is this book and it is Take Up Space, The Unprecedented AOC. So if you don't know, AOC is a congresswoman and I really love her so much and have always been really fascinated about her politics, even her growing up to where she is now. And this is not an autobiography. This is somebody who had writ has written about AOC and I looked again on Goodreads and has generally pretty good reviews. And I especially wanted to get the physical copy because it has like different pictures going on. And yeah, just basically talks about her life and I just want to know more about her. I really like her, what she stands with, you know, issues and she's like my favorite person right now in politics. So I've been reading a lot more also like biographies, autobiographies of different people. 
Recently I read one about a Peloton instructor that I love taking classes from and it's just always so interesting people that you look up to or know just learning more about them I just find it so interesting so I'm excited to read this this will probably be my next read this book it's called the anatomy of anxiety understanding and overcoming the body's fear response so this had mixed reviews on Goodreads but reading the bio and the different chapters I could you know me along with I'm assuming a lot of us, I deal with a lot of anxiety and I'm just honestly sick of it. <laughs> I just wanted to learn more about anxiety and see if this book could help me at all because I just, yeah, like I said, I'm kind of sick of it. And <laughs> this book is written by a doctor as well, so she seems pretty qualified. And it goes into different parts of anxiety as well that I want to know more about. For example, I've been wondering lately is the type of food that I'm eating, like how good is it for me? How much is it affecting my mental health and my anxiety? And there's a whole chapter talking about food for thought. Another thing is I've been dealing with a lot of low energy levels with remote working. And one chapter is called Tired and Wired. I didn't even realize until recently that my anxiety is actually a big part of why I'm super tired all the time because it's just emotionally draining. And that's another thing, just learning more about myself that I didn't realize. Even women's hormonal health and anxiety, that all that kind of stuff, everything just plays together and I just want to know more about it. So I thought this was also a really good book. It seems to be really centered around women as well, which anxiety affects women and men differently. So those are all the books that I got. It's quite a lot and I still have a lot to read at home and I'm just adding to the pile of books that is on my list to read. But I'm really excited about the books that I got. I think it'll be just great to read and learn about different things from climate change to politics to anxiety to how to treat animals better and have some thrillers and romances thrown in there. So kind of a wide breadth of books and I'm really excited about them. I'll definitely be going back to this Barnes & Noble because it's really sentimental to me. It's the Barnes & Noble that I grew up going to. That has been my Barnes & Noble trip and haul and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're seeing this and that you're enjoying the rain sounds, some nice rain and some more. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video of mine. Bye.